Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and today this is the application that we're going to be building. I have called it Food Palace and we're going to be using the MealDB API to get a bunch of data about some meals and then we're going to be displaying them in our mobile application which we're going to build using React Native Expo. So right here this is the home page which shows categories about meals and you can see we get a bunch of categories and if you go ahead and click on one such as this one you can see that we're using react native components and this is called the touchable opacity so if i click on this it takes me to an inner page where i get a description of that particular category and then when i scroll to the bottom then it gives me a bunch of foods that have been prepared using that particular category in this case it is lamb so if i click on one particular food here for example it takes me to an inner page which shows exactly how that food is made it gives me the ingredients and instructions on how to make it so it's quite a bit of functionality and we're going to be using react navigation and you can see the way the pages flow with one another they just slide in and out looking quite quite nice and what you've seen there is the loading state so while we are loading in the data from the api then it shows us a loading state so that is the application that we're going to be building in this video and then of course you can see that we have our custom headers inside here and the headers are dependent on whatever we click on so right here i'm clicking on beef and if i go ahead and click on a meal here then the title is also going to change and it's going to take in that particular name so we're going to be creating that custom header and that is the application that we're going to be building i hope you enjoy it and if you do then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel I'm trying to get to 6,000 subscribers, so any help is going to be highly appreciated. And let's begin. And so the first thing I'm going to do is open up my terminal. And then inside my terminal, I'm going to cd into my desktop. And then inside my desktop, I'm going to cd into a folder that I have that is called mobile apps. So mobile dash apps. And then inside here, I'm going to create my new expo application. So I'm going to say npx create dash expo dash app. And I'm going to call this food dash palace and then i'm going to let this execute and so once this finishes running i'm going to cd into the newly created folder that is called food dash palace and then i'm going to open up an instance of visual studio code inside here by saying code dot and there we go so before we begin i want us to first install our routing and we're going to be using react navigation for this so I'm going to open up my browser here and then I'm going to navigate into React Navigation and we are going to be using the native stack navigator. So what we need to do first of all is we need to go ahead and install the default navigation first of all. So React Navigation native and its dependencies. So we need to click on this first and then we can go ahead and install React Navigation native. So let's copy this link and then let's go back into our terminal. Let's paste it in and then let it run. And then once it finishes, then we need to go ahead and install React Native Screens and React Native Safe Area Context. So let's copy this. And because we're using Expo, we need to say npx expo install. If you're not using Expo, then you go ahead and use this command instead. So let's paste this inside here, let it run once again. And there we go. And then once we do that, we are not going to be building for iOS. So we can go ahead and begin to create our navigator. Now, before we do this step, what I want to do is go back and we are going to go back into the native stack navigator, which is this link right here. And then now we need to go ahead and install React Navigation native stack. So let's copy this and paste it inside here. And there we go. Now, before we begin to run our application, I also want to go ahead and install Tailwind CSS because it is going to be easier for us when we are styling out our components. So let's go ahead into native wind, which is Tailwind CSS for the native platform. So nativewind.dev is the website and we are on the quick starts using Expo. So let's go ahead and we've already run these two steps. So we need to go ahead and say npm install native wind. So npm install native wind. Let me increase this. And then if you take a look at this command right here, they recommend to install Tailwind CSS, the 3.3.2 version, 
because the version of native wind that we are using is not compatible with a higher version of Tailwind CSS. And that is what this question right here says. So if you want to use a greater version of Tailwind CSS, which is not 3.3.2, then you need to go ahead and install native wind version 4. And before you go ahead and do that, just remember that currently, as of recording this video, then native wind version 4 is still in beta, if I'm not wrong. So let's go back. Let's go ahead and say npm install dash dash dev tailwind CSS 3.3.2. So I'm going to say npm install dash dash include equals to include equals to dev. And then we're going to say tailwind CSS three uh, at 3.3.2. So this is how they recommend to install it if you're installing a dev dependency, which is tailwind CSS in this case. So let this run once again. And then once it finishes running, we should be good to go with everything. And there we go. So it has finished. And I just noticed that we need to go ahead and do this step, by the way. So let's just copy this command. So npx tailwind CSS init. Let's paste it in, which is going to create our tailwind config file. And then inside our tailwind config file, we need to go ahead and copy this content right here. So that tailwind CSS is going to check for these files and folders and it is going to filter out the CSS that we write inside them. So inside our Tailwind config.js, let's paste the content right here, paste it in. And we have the app.js right here, but we are going to create a directory here called screens. So inside screens, that's where our navigation screens, really our pages for the application are going to be. And then just in case, I'm not sure if we're going to create it yet, but just in case we do, I also want to go ahead and add another another folder here. And for this folder, I'm going to call it components. So components. And once again, I'm not sure whether we're going to have this folder, but let's just include it so that in case we have the components folder, then we don't end up getting bugs, which we can't figure out, you know. So let's save that. And then let's go ahead and add this line into our bubble plugin. So bubble config JS. So let's copy this line and inside the bubble config, let's paste it here and save it. And then that should be now everything done that we need to install to begin with. And so now that we're finished installing everything, I want to go ahead and run my application. So I'm going to say npm run start and this is going to open up our application. It's going to give us a QR code that we can scan if you're using Expo Go. And then it's also going to give us a couple of commands that we can run, such as to reload the application or whatnot, or to open an Android emulator. So I'm going to be using my physical device, but if you don't want to use your physical device, what you can do is right inside the terminal, you can press the A key right here. And when you press A, it is going to open up your emulator if you have Android Studio installed. So in this case, what I want to do is the following. I'm going to open up my terminal. And inside this terminal, I'm going to run a command here called screen copy. So SCR uh, CPY, which is screen copy. And this is a program that I installed. I think it is also available for Windows and for Mac OS, but I'm currently on Linux. So when I run this command, it is going to check for my phone, which is connected or by USB. And then it's going to mirror my phone screen to my computer so that I don't have to keep on switching be between my phone screen and my computer. I think it's just going to speed up the development process. Once again, the program is called screen copy and the shorthand for it is SCRCPY. You can just Google it if you want to install it as well. So let this run. And there we go. You can see that now my phone screen is being mirrored on my computer. And I just remembered, if you're going to be using screen copy, do make sure that you go into your phone settings and enable developer options and then enable USB debugging. Otherwise, this won't work. So now that we have this, I just want to place it to the right and then I can place this to the left right here. And then we can begin. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to set up our navigation. So I'm going to go into my workspace and create a new folder called screens. And then inside screens, I'm going to open up a new file called home.js. And then inside home.js, I'm going to say RNF, so React Native Function. And this is coming from an extension that is called ES7 plus React Redux. 
and react native snippets you can go ahead and install it so i'm going to save that and then i'm going to also go ahead and create a new file here and i'm just going to call it something like foods.js and then once again rnf and then enter and then save it and once we have those two screens we can go into our app.js and then we can remove everything inside here and then we can just once again say rnf but we're not going to be using these components so what we need to do inside here is we need to go ahead and import the navigation container so navigation container from react navigation native is it from react navigation native or native stack let's see i mean it should work even if it's from either of them and then we also need to go ahead and install uh, sorry not install but import the create native uh which create what's it called native stack navigator create native stack navigator from at react from at react navigation native stack and then we can go ahead and declare our stack and the stack here is going to be the parent for all our pages so const stack is equal to create native stack navigator and then inside here we can wrap everything inside a navigation container and then the navigation container is going to take in the stack dot navigator stack dot navigator and then inside here now we can begin to declare our screen so stack dot screen and the name for our first screen is the home screen and then the component that we want to render component is equal to the home component which we need to import so let's go ahead and import the home so import home from dot slash screens slash home and then let's also go ahead and import the foods page so foods and then let's copy this down and change this to foods there we go and then once we save that then let me go ahead and uh, what is it oh this one you can just click on that and it's going to load my application and we should now see the home page and in this case the home page says home so nothing really fancy but if it does say home then everything is working correctly we can close this page and we can close this and there we go we can see that now our application says home so we are on the home page now on the home page what we need to do is go ahead and begin to get our data so that we can display it on the screen the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to go back into my browser and i'm going to open up what is called the meal db which is the api that we're going to be using once my computer stops hanging there we go so i'm going to navigate into the meal db the meal db so the meal db.com and we want to go into the api because that is what we're going to be using and there we go so you can take a look at this api i can zoom in and there are a couple of endpoints that we can hit so if you want to search for a meal by its name then you can just append the name of the meal right here with the with its name if you want to list every meal by the first letter you can do this and so on and so forth so the first thing that i want to do is i want to go ahead and get all the categories so this is the endpoint that we want for the home page and then depending on the category that you click on you're going to get meals based on that category so let's go ahead and copy this and then back inside our application we're going to do the following i'm going to go right here and i'm going to say import use state state and use effect as well and then i'm going to set up my step state value so i'm going to say const meals or you know it's not meals it's categories. so categories and set categories this is a capital c this is going to be called to use state and by default it's going to be an empty array because if you take a look at the api which i should have done if you open this link then you notice that we get an object and this object contains an array called categories and categories is an array of objects so what we're going to do and you know what we're getting an object first so this can just remain to be empty and then below this we're going to say i'm going to create another state value called is loading and set is loading which is going to help us to manage our loading state and by default we're going to set it to true because we want our application to always show a loading state if there's no data being showed on the screen and then we can set up our function which is going to go to our endpoint 
and I'm going to use effect and then place in my callback function with an empty dependency array so that it only runs once on the initial render and then I'm going to place in my try catch block so inside the try catch block or rather inside the catch block I'm just going to say console console dot error the error that you get back in case we have an error and then inside the, the try block I'm going to say set is loading to true and this is just like a, a buffer kind of just to, to make sure that is loading is always set to true even though by default it is true so set is loading to true and then i'm going to say const res or the response that we get back we're going to say await now you know what i need to i need to get this inside a function this inside a function so let me go ahead and say const get categories this is going to be an asynchronous function And then below this, we can go ahead and call that function called get categories. And then we're going to say const res is equal to await fetch. And we're going to be fetching from the link that we copied. Oops, I didn't copy it. Sorry. We need to copy this link, copy and paste it. And make sure that you add HTTPS right before the www. Otherwise, you're going to get an error. And then we're going to say const data is equal to await res.json. And then we can now say set categories categories into the data dot categories and data dot categories because we want to go inside this array so we're going to save that save it and nothing is going to happen on the home screen but if we go ahead and try to get the length of the categories that we get back and categories is an array so you can say categories dot length and we can just say categories for the text go read and save it then you can see that we get 14 categories on the screen right here so 14 categories so that means that this is working correctly now what i want to do is i don't want to return a view first of all i want to return a safe area view so safe area view and import it from react native safe area context and inside here i want to render a scroll view and scroll view is just to help us so that just in case the content is more than the height of the device, then we're able to scroll the content. So we're going to render a scroll view here and make sure that you also import this from React Native. So import scroll view from React Native and import safe area view from React Native safe area context. And then inside our scroll view, what you can do is the following. We can render a view and then inside this view, we can now begin to map over our categories. So I'm going to say categories dot map and then for every single category category that we get back we want to go ahead and render our implicit return and then we want to render a component here called touchable opacity touchable opacity and what touchable opacity does is that it reduces the opacity of the element when you click on it so it's kind of like a touch feedback and make sure that you also import this once again from react native right there and then inside touchable opacity just like react in the web we need to pass in a key and the key here i'm going to use category dot and let me just check this category dot id category so category dot id category and then inside here what can we do we can render an image and then close this out and then control spacebar to make sure that you import it and then this takes in a prop called source and source because we're getting this from an api which is from the web we need to pass in a uri and then the uri is going to be this link so this link is in a key of str category thumb which is the thumbnail so i can just copy that and then i can say category category dot this paste it in and then let's see below this what we want to do is we want to render some text and then the text is going to say category category dot what is it dot str category and then below this we're going to render some other text which is category dot str category description let me just copy this because it's long so paste it inside here now when i save this hopefully we should be able to see some bit of things happening on the screen so let's save that and then let this reload and we get an error that says image doesn't exist so once again the reason why it doesn't exist is because i haven't imported it on the top 
So what you can do is right here, you can just say control spacebar and then take this one that says React Native. So when you click on it, then it's going to import it for you automatically. So save that. And then once it reloads, it says cannot read property map of undefined. So that probably means that all of this is loading in before our get request can run. And so what you can do is the following. You can go ahead and uh, let's see. Let's grab this entire thing. Oops. So we're left with these two brackets. And then we're going to say this. When is loading is true, we want to render a component called activity indicator. So activity indicator is going to show us like a circle rotating thingy. And we're going to give this a size of large. And then when is loading is false, we want to render our categories.map function. So let's save that. And now we should see our activity indicator right there because we have not set is loading back to false. So what you can do is right after we get our categories, then you can say set is loading to false and it should get rid of that. And then we should now be able to see our everything. Look at that. So this is looking nice. Now, the reason why we can't see the images is because we, the images need to have a height and a width so that they can display on the screen. So right here, because we have installed Tailwind CSS, we can just give this a class name, oops, a class name, and I can say width dash full and height, I can do height dash 52 should be enough. Let's save that and we should now see our images once this reloads. And there we go. So we have our images and you can see because of the scroll view, we can now scroll our content. And then because of the touchable opacity, look at what happens when I touch on this, then it slightly fades away because of the touchable opacity. Now, what I want to do is see this tiny scroll bar right here. I want to get rid of that. And the way we do that is inside the scroll view, we can pass in a prop here called shows vertical scroll indicator. And then when you set this to false, then it's not going to show the scroll indicator when you're scrolling. So that is the kind of behavior that I want for this application. And then I want to get rid of this top header, right? I don't want this to say home. In fact, I won't even want to create a custom one for this application. So what we do is inside the app.js, we're going to go back into the stack.navigator and then we're going to pass in screen options, screen options, and then using our double brackets, I'm going to say header shown and set this to false. And this is going to apply for every single screen that we have. So even for the foods page, it is not going to show up. Now, if you don't want this behavior for your application, what you can do is you can just cut this out from here and I want to comment it out because we're going to bring it back. And so if you had a use case where you don't want the header to be shown on the home screen, but you want it to be shown on the food screen, what you can do is inside the individual screens, you can go ahead and pass in options. So options, so it's options for individual screens, but it's screen options for global screens for every single screen that you want. So inside options, you can go ahead and pass in your object, your object, and then just type in header shown and set it to false. And this is only going to apply on the home page. And just to show you, once we begin working on the foods, you're going to see this in action. So I'm going to leave this here for demonstration. And so let's go back into our home page. And then inside our home page, I want to go ahead and add a bit of padding all around from these elements. So I'm going to go inside my scroll view, give this a class name. And I'm going to say padding all round of four. And we're going to push these items inwards just a bit. Reload. I think my internet is down. That's why it's, it's not showing anything. So once it reloads, you can see that now we have a bit of padding so that now the content doesn't touch the edge of the screen. Now let's begin to style each of these individual elements because I want to add a bit of margin between them. So inside the touchable opacity, I'm going to give this a class name and I'm going to say, give it a class name of border and border dash slate dash 400 and then rounded dash large. And this should give it a slight border for everything as you can see right there. And then I'm going to give the touchable opacity a padding around of four to push the content inwards just a bit, as you can see, nice. And then we need to reduce the height of the image probably because you can see that it is touching the edges and that it's like overflowing outside. So we can go ahead and reduce this to about 44 should be okay. Let's see, that should be fine. Okay, fantastic. 
and then let's go ahead and style out the title here which is the category let's give this a class name and i'm going to say font dash bold and uh, text dash slate dash 800 let's say 800 and then text dash 2xl make it a bit bigger and then give it a margin on the bottom of 2 to push away from the text and then for this text we're going to give this a class name and i'm going to say text slate text slate dash really slate dash 600 and then text dash small and then leading dash 5 to increase the line height just a bit and we're going to have that now for the home page i don't want the entire text to be shown because there are some which have quite a bit of text as you can see right here so i don't want the entire text to be shown so what i'm going to do is this i'm going to go ahead and cut this out and then insert my, my curly brackets here i'm going to pass in my template literals which are backticks and then my dollar sign and then pass this in once again but i'm going to say dot substring oops it's not there it's inside here so dot substring and i want to count from the first character to the hundredth character and then render dot 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 when we reach the hundredth character so that when i save this then the text is just going to be limited as you can see i think that is much better and you know what for this header for the heading here i want to also add margin on the top so let's change this to my2 so that it pushes away from the image right there so next i want to go ahead and give each of these elements a border on the bottom so that they push away from one another so i'm just going to go here and give this a margin bottom of four and that should do that for every single element that we have as you can see so that's looking quite nice now i want to go ahead and build out our header before we begin to work on our routing because i want the header to be right on top with some custom stuff so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a components folder here so create a new folder called components and then inside here i'm going to create a header.js and then i'm going to say rnf now inside the header we want we want to render a view and we're going to give this a class name and i'm going to say bg dash black and padding all around of four now i'm going to save that and i'm going to leave the text here actually not let me give this a class name of text white text dash white because i want to go inside my home page and render the header and the header i'm just going to render it probably hmm let's do it here but this is going to be a bit of an issue because now this padding of four is also going to apply for this header now you can go ahead and say control spacebar and then enter which is going to import the header component for you automatically now when i save this let's see what you have on the screen and we have that see that now the reason why this is pushed inwards is because the header is now placed inside the safe area view and the safe area view has a padding all round of four so what you can do is we can go ahead and remove this padding of four from this safe area view and save it and then this is going to push to be pushed on top as you can see but then inside the scroll view we're going to add in a class name and say padding all round of four which is going to push this in once as you can see but for the header i want the header to remain as it is and then something else that i have noticed is that by default react native expo has a background color of gray it's barely visible but it does have it so what you can do is give this a class name and i'm going inside the safe area view because it is the parent of everything so inside here i can just say bg white and it's going to give it a background color of white as you can see that now this is now white as it should be and then you can also just say flex one just in case and the reason why you're saying flex one here is in case the content doesn't go all the way to the bottom of the screen then you don't want the bgy to be like somewhere or half the screen and then gray for the rest of it so flex one just ensures that it spans the entire device height now save this and then let's go back into our header and then for this i'm going to say text center oops text center and then i'm going to say font dash bold and text dash xl to make it a bit bigger there we go so header and in this case i don't want it to say header instead i want to give it a custom title and so this title is going to be coming in as a prop so we can destructure the title and then you can pass in this title as a prop so when i save this then it should be empty but then when i go back into my home page i can go ahead and pass in a prop here called title and i can say home 
or home or let me say welcome welcome so this is going to be my title as you can see for the home page when you're rendering the header on the home page you want to say welcome and then when you render the header on the food page you can say something else and then before we finish all this up i want to go ahead and change this status bar so back inside my app.js i'm going to go ahead and on top of the stack.navigator i'm going to render a status bar component so status bar and use the second one which is going to import it for you and the status bar i can give this a background color and i'm going to say hashtag 000 which is black and it's going to black out the status bar as you can see but i'm going to give it a style of light which is going to make our icons visible inside our status bar i think that is better and it looks nice 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 as you can see fantastic now let's go back into our home page and then let's deal with our click event here so on the touchable opacity we are going to use the on press and when we press on this we want to go ahead and access the navigation oh sorry the navigation and then inside the navigation we want to say navigation is it navigator no navigation dot navigate and we want to navigate into the foods page now when i save this and then i click on one of these then we should go into the foods page so let's click on this and look at that so it says navigation doesn't exist that is because we need to go ahead and destructure it so let's get navigation from here so navigation is it navigation or navigator let's try it again and there we go so did you see that so when i click on an element here then it takes me into the foods page so that is looking nice 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 and a thing about the stack navigator is you notice that if you go into a different screen which is not the home page then you also get this back arrow and this is a pretty nice functionality if this is what you want but remember that for us this was only for demonstration remember so i was showing you that we have disabled the header on the home screen but not on the food screen but if i remove this from here and then i enable it here then the the header is going to be disabled for every single screen that you have as you can see right there and now you can't even see the text that says foods because it is now like behind the status bar right here which is also blacked out so for the foods page we need access to the categories and we also need access the the single category that has been clicked on so that it displays the correct like food category and the way we do that is right our after our navigation dot navigate we can go ahead and pass in the category here and category is basically the object that we get back when we are mapping over our categories and once we do that then the foods page is going to have access to this category object so i can save that and then if i go into my foods page and then let me just go ahead and say this i can just say console.log and i can console log the params is it the params let me just go ahead and destructure you know what? it's not the params it's route and then let's console log route dot params and then save that and if you take a look at your terminal we can go ahead and say let's reload this reload it to be safe so when i click on beef i should be getting something that is equivalent to beef as you can see so we get the id category which is one the category name which is beef and then the description which is here and then the thumbnail so we're getting back one single object based on what we click on so what i'm going to do is this i want to go ahead and now i'm going to render my safe area view once again so safe area view and then of course import it from react native safe area context and then i want to render my scroll view next so scroll view and then for this one once again i want to say shows uh, vertical vertical scroll indicator and set this to false and then inside my scroll view i just want to render some text and this text is going to say route.params and we want to go ahead and get route.params.str category so route.params.str category and inside here now we should be able to see the name beef but let's go ahead and give it a larger class name or that larger font size so text dash 4xl and then font dash bold and text slate 800 
let's save this and hopefully it should work but it's not going to work of course because we need to import this so import it from react native save it and then now if i click on beef then there we go so we can see that we get beef so that is looking nice and then let's give this a class name and let's say padding on round of four and then once again inside the safe area view this is a bit grayed out i don't want it to be grayed out so i'm going to say give it a class name of flex one and bg white which is going to make it white there we go fantastic now i want to go ahead and render the image on top so right above this text i want to render my image component control spacebar and then import it right there and the source for this is going to be uri and then route.params.str category thumb which is coming from the api and then give this a class name is going to be width dash full and height dash 52 and save it and we should be able to see our image so fantastic and then below this text i want to go ahead and render some other text which is going to say route.params.str category description once again coming from the api and then we can go ahead and start this out so give this a class name text slate 600 and then text small and then leading five and save it i think that should be okay there we go that is fantastic now for this for our heading here i want to go ahead and give it a margin on the y of six margin y six which is going to separate it out just a bit okay that is looking nice 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 now let's go ahead and render our header on top because i want to go ahead and be able to navigate forward and back now what we're going to do is right before the scroll view we're going to render our header component and import it from components header right there and then for this one if i save this it's not going to have a title as you can see and for the title here i'm going to go ahead and give the title of our header the same title as this as the the current like category that we're viewing so i'm going to say route.params.str category and when I save that, then we should have that. So there we go. So we are currently on the beef category. And something else that I do want to do is I want to go ahead and pass in my navigation here and set it equal to the navigation function so that I'm going to go ahead and pass in an icon inside my header, which is going to show up here so that when I click on it, I have access to the navigator and I can go back. So what I'm going to do is save this. And then, of course, we need to get the navigation from here. Otherwise, it breaks, as you can see. And let's try something else. Let's go into chicken. And you can see that this is now going to say chicken also. And inside our header, we can go ahead and destructure the navigation as well. Navigation. And then what I want to do is this. I want to go ahead and render an icon here. And I've forgotten the name of the icon. So let's go into React icons. So not React icon, but Expo Vector icons. So Expo Vector really vector icons there we go click on this loading and then i want to render an icon that is called chevron and chevron oh my god loading so this one so chevron left so click on this let's copy this to import it copy and paste it here and then copy this to use it so paste it here so we are copying this icon rather we are pasting this icon right before the text that says the, the name of the, the screen that we're viewing. And for this one, the color for this is going to be white so that we can actually see it. And if you take a look at our application, then once it reloads in, we should be able to see our icon. And there we go. So there is our icon right here, looking quite ugly, but we can start this out. So I can go ahead and give this a class name of flex-row, flex-row and item-center and justify-between, which should now push this to the end, okay. So this is pushed to the end and then this is pushed here. I can increase the size of this icon to about 36, make it a bit bigger. That's too big, let's say 28. I think that is much better. Now, if I go ahead and try to add an on press here, it shouldn't work, but let me try it. So on press and we're going to say navigation.goback. So navigation.goback meaning basically go back to the screen that you are on before you came to the screen. So if I save this, and I try to click on this, then okay, it works, it works, it works. I thought that because it was an icon, it wouldn't work, but it works. So that's fantastic, look at that. Now, something else that I want to change. 
see how when i click on this it kind of like fades inside i don't want it to fade in or rather even to fade out when you go back instead i want it to slide in or slide out so i'm going to go back into my app.js and then inside here inside my screen options i can go ahead and say gesture enabled and set this to true or rather set this to true and then i can go ahead and say gesture direction and i can set this to horizontal and when i save this and i try to click on one element here and oh sorry it still doesn't work so it's it, it has another one called animation animation is it animation yes animation so animation you can slide from bottom slide from left slide from right depending on what you want to do you can use any of this so i'm going to go with slide from right and if i'm not wrong by default this is the behavior when you're using ios but it's not when you're using android so you need to specify this so when i click on this now it should slide in i think that is much better and then when you click on it again it slides out so that is much better for me now what you need to do inside here is we need to go ahead back inside our foods and we need to go and fetch the different kinds of foods depending on this category so what you need to do is we need to go back into our api so inside the api if you scroll down just a bit you can go ahead and find this part that says filter by main ingredient so if you go ahead and try to open this link up then you'll notice that right here that they are searching for chicken breast but if i change this into something like beef then it shows me the meals that contain beef inside them so we're going to be hitting this endpoint depending on the page that we're looking at in our application so let me go ahead and copy this link and then let's go ahead and back inside our application we are going to go ahead and fetch our data and you know what let me place this inside a variable so const url is equal to this because because some of the things that we're going to be doing are similar to what we have on the home page so i don't want to type everything out again so we need these two state values so copy and paste them here but this one is not going to say categories it is going to say meals so meals and set meals and then is loading as set is loading can remain and then we also need to import use state so what i've done there is just gone here and say control spacebar and then it gives me a drop down where i can auto import this and then we need this use effect but we're going to change the function name so copy and paste them here now this is not going to say get categories it's going to say get meals and then the function get meals and then the url now we can just go ahead and just cut this out and then we can pass in url and not let's not do that because it's going to give us issues i just noticed that so let's cut it out from there and then let's place it inside some backticks because we need to go ahead and pass in the the current category that we're doing so we need to go ahead and pass in route.params.str category so that it gets the meals according to the category that we're on and then once we do that we need to go ahead and say set meals into data.meals is it dot meals let's check out the api once again so data.meals dot meals what was i looking at so data.meals and then let's see so data.meals so set is loading to false and yeah that should be almost fine should be fine yeah i think it should be fine now let's go right below this image this text and this text let's go ahead and render a view here and then inside this view we're going to say when is loading is loading is true then we want to render our activity indicator and then the size for this is equal to large and yes i do realize that we are using is loading many times and it is possible to refactor it into a different component but you can go ahead and do that if you want to i really don't want to to do it right now so when is loading is true you want the activity indicator and when it is false we want to go ahead and say meals dot map and then for every meal that we get back we want to go ahead and render a touchable opacity so touchable opacity and then the key for this is going to say meal dot id meal and then close out our touchable opacity and then we can render out an image here so image the source for this is going to be uri and then we're going to say meal.str meal 
Bam. I think that is what we have in the API. Yes, this one. And then we can give the mail name. So right below the image, we can say render some text that says mail.str mail. Wait, what, what was it? Oh, str mail. Okay. I thought it was str mail name. Okay. Now let's save that and we should be able to see something on the screen. And it says use effect doesn't exist. Sorry, we need to import it. So right here, control space bar and then import it. And so let's try it out. So when I click on beef, we should go into the beef page and see that, see that right there. It was showing our loading indicator. And then now it lists, it lists out all the meals that contain beef. Now we need to just start this out to look better because it looks quite bad. So inside the view, first of all, I'm going to give this a class name and say margin top of eight to push away from this text. And then inside the image here, I'm going to give this a class name and say width dash full and height dash 40. That should be okay. And there we go. Okay, that looks ugly. Let's say object dash contain. Contain should work, right? Let's try it. Nope, it doesn't. Let's say object cover. If that doesn't work, then we need to play around with the sizes a bit more. So let's say height dash 52 for our images. Let's see. I mean, we can work with that. And then let's give them a rounded dash large for the images. And then for the text, let's give this a class name and say text dash XL font font dash bold text slate dash 800. And then let's go back inside the touchable opacity. Give this a class name and let's say border and border dash slate slate dash 400 and then rounded dash large and then padding all around or to push it inwards. So basically the same styles that we had in the in the home page, as you can see. So that's looking nice. Let's give this a margin on top. So right here, margin top two. And then inside the touchable opacity, let's give it a margin bottom of four for everything that they push away from one another. And you can use Flexbox if you want, but that will mean introducing an extra component, which I don't want to do. So that's looking okay. Would you look at that? And if we go back and let's go into chicken, then we should get chicken categories. Look at that. Looking fantastic. Now, I want to go ahead and do this. When I click on this one, I want to see more information about this particular meal. So we're going to create a new screen called food. So food singular.js. And then we're just going to say React Native function. Save it. So once we do that, then we need to go ahead and create the, the, the screen for this. So inside my app.js, we're just going to copy this down, change this to food and food. So food singular, and then let's import it right here. So food, and then let's bring this on top because it is a high level import. And we're not using these two so we can safely remove them and then save it. And we can even remove the, the React import here and save it. There we go. So now what we need to do is this, just like we did on the home page, we're going to go ahead and pass in our on press here. So on press, and then we're going to pass in and say navigation, navigation dot navigate. And we want to navigate into the food page. So the single food page, and then we need to pass in our meal so that this page is going to have access to the meal object. So have we distracted this? Yes, we have. So when I save this, and I click on an element here, then it should take me into that other meal page, which you can't see because the text is behind our status bar. So let's begin to style this out. So once again, we need to go ahead and render our safe area view. So safe area view, and then import it. And do not, let me see what styles did it give here. So this one, let, let me just copy this. And do not, we need this one and the scroll view as well. So copy and just paste them here. And then we need to close out the scroll view. And then we need to close out the safe area view as well. So safe area view. And then just make sure that you're importing them. So control space bar, import it, control space bar, import it, control space bar and import it. And save it and we should not have any issues. So it says route doesn't exist. That's because we need to distract it here. So route and then also need to distract the navigation. 
and then the title for this we can just remove it for now we can set it to a string here like single food page and save it and let's test it out let's see go into the beef go into this one and there you go so single food page that is showing up now i just noticed that this this title might be a bit large hmm let's reduce it right let's reduce this to about text base which is like not not so not so big and not so small and this applies for every single page as well as you can see so now what we need to do is this let's go ahead and console log so so not inside the header we need, it should be inside the food let's go ahead and console log dot log the route dot params so that we can see what we're going to be getting back and you know what we're only getting back the id and then the mail name and then the mail thumbnail so what we need to do is actually not even this we need to go ahead and check our api and the api should give us ability to search for a particular meal and so let's see it says where is the link here we go so you can search for a meal by its name so when i go ahead and open up this link you can see that we get the meal and then we get a bunch of data about that particular meal so what you're going to do is this inside here we're going to set up our state values so the first one i'm going to say const meal singular and set meal is going to be equal to use state and then import it and by default we, we can just have it as an empty array and then const is loading and set is loading is equal to use state and by default is going to be true and then pass in our use effect and then pass in our empty dependency array and then we can go ahead and say this we can say const get meal meal is equal to an really meal is equal to an asynchronous function and then we can go ahead and pass in our try catch block and then remember to call our function so get meal like so and then for the error let's just say console.error the error that we get back in case there's an error and then here we're going to say const res is equal to await fetch and we're going to be fetching from a link here so pass in our back ticks and then const data is equal to await res.json and then we're going to say set mill into what is it into data.mill and then set is loading to false and i just noticed that i forgot to set it to true here so set is loading true and then now we just need to go ahead and copy this link and paste it here but then we need this text to be dynamic so we're going to pass in our dollar sign and curly brackets and say route dot params dot str mil which which should be correct that should be correct yes yes and then let's see inside the scroll view let's render some text that says the uh let's see what does it say actually what we didn't we need to do is we need to first render out a view because we need to map over this data that we get back so we're going to say mil.map and then for every single let me call it m for lack of a better name so m and then i'm going to render out the the what was it for this case we're going to render out the view because when we reach this page we're not going to be going into any other page so we can render out the view and then the view is going to have a key of m.id mil which is coming from here and if you can hear some screaming from outside, those are just some children playing. And once we do that, we can go ahead and render out the image of the meal and then pass in the source here, URI, and you can say m dot with the image, str mail thumb, so copy and paste, and then give this a width, oh sorry, a class name. It's name equals to width dash full and height dash 52 because we have been using 52 all along and then let's see we can give it a class of rounded dash large and then save it and we should be able to see something on the screen unless anything breaks use effect doesn't exist why do i keep on forgetting to import this and then we don't need this console log anymore so we can remove it and then now once it reloads right here click on this and then click on this and we should see something is breaking
So once again, we need to pass in our loading state. So let's just grab this up to here. And then when is loading is true, we want to render our activity indicator. So activity indicator with the size of large. And then when it is not true, then we can go ahead and pass in our mean. So save it. Let's try it once more. Let's try it. Click on this. And something is still breaking. Cannot read property map of undefined. So what am I doing wrong? I'm doing something wrong. Let's see. Mills. Yes, mills. So this should say set data into data.mills so that we get the, the data from the API. And then now let's try it again. So click on this. And now it should work. And it's not yet. Image doesn't exist. Oh my God. Why did I forget to import all of these? Import it. And now let's try it again. So click on that. And there we go. So now we're getting the, the, the mail that we click on. Okay. Now for the title for this page, I want to use the object that we passed in inside here. So I want to use this mail object. So I'm going to say the title is going to be route.params.strmail. And that should render the name here. There we go. And then what I can do is if if the mail name is quite long, I don't know of any any long mail name that we can use to try out. But sometimes when the mail name is too long, it can overflow up to here. So I can add like a check. You can see how this one is like it's not so long, but it's quite a bit. What I can do is you can add in a check here. So the check that we're going to pass inside here is we're going to say when rot.params.strmail.length is greater than 16, when this evaluates to true, then we want to go ahead and render out, let's say rout.params.strmail.substring, substring, and then to render like 0 to 16 and then render dot dot dot. So when it is greater, when the, the name is greater than 16 characters, then we render this part. Otherwise, we render the entire mail name. Oh, sorry, you know what? This should be a question mark. And then we need to go ahead and pass in our, our double colon. And then just say when it is not true, then we want to render route dot params dot str mean and then save that and this is how it looks like so now you can see that you see that so when it is greater than 16 characters now it renders like half of them name so that if you get an extremely long name then it doesn't like overflow over your entire header now you might be wondering why you are seeing three of these or rather not three really but multiple of these the reason is because there are some meals which have different cooking methods so when you get when you encounter such like that then you get the the or you get all the meals all at once so that's okay so let's go back and let's use this one and then now let's continue building out this page so for this page we're going to do the following we're going to go below this image and then we're going to print out our text and the text says m.str mail if i'm not wrong let me reduce this so that I don't keep on uh, overlapping my fonts really. Here, there we go. So str mail is the mail name. And then what category, you can pass in category and then the area and we can do all that. So str mail, let's save that and it should appear here. So there we go. So give this a class name and I'm going to say margin y of six and text dash let's say 2xl and then font dash bold and then text slate 800 and then once we have that we're going to go below this we're going to render some text that says m.str mail description description and it should render the mail description right there or oh, it doesn't what's it called instructions instructions not description so str what is it? str instructions yes instructions and we should get that okay and then for this one give this a class name and say text slate 600 text 
dash sm and leading five to increase the line height. And you know what? leading five might be a bit small. Let's say leading six. But that means that I have to change it everywhere. So let's find leading five here. So leading changes to six. And then on the home page as well, leading changes to six. Now, if you take a look at this closely, you will notice that if you scroll to the bottom, there is some text right on the bottom which is cut out because it is behind my, my bottom navigation bar. So in order to fix that, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go inside my scroll view and the scroll view has another prop that it can take in and it is called content container style. And then inside here, I can go ahead and add in some styles. So I can give it a padding bottom of 32 which is going to increase like the leeway where we can scroll as you can see that now we can see the entire text i can even make it bigger such as 40 just to make it a bit bigger so there we go looking fantastic so we have our instructions here and you know what the instructions never come first it's the ingredients that come first so we need to first of all add in our ingredients before we do that though this is what i want to do i want to I want to render a view, a, a view component right above my, my meal name. And this view is going to take in two text components, so two of them. And then the first one is going to be the category. And then the second one is going to be the area that it comes from. So we are going to say m.str, what is it? Category, category. Oops category and then the second one is going to say m dot str area and then save that and they should now appear on top right here and then click on this and we're going to give this view a class name of margin top margin top dash six and then flex row and items center and justify justify dash start which is going to align this in row form and then give it like a gap of two just to separate them out a bit. And then for this one, I'm going to give this a class name. And I'm going to say BG slate dash, let's say 200. Let's save it. Let's see. That's okay. Give it a padding on the X of about two. And padding Y of, I mean, we can do, we can even, uh, let's say, let's say padding X3, padding Y2. Let's see. Okay, and then let's give it a rounded dash full and a text dash slate dash 800. Save it. And there we go. And then we can copy these styles on the second one as well. So copy and paste them on the area so that they have the same styles. Fantastic. There we go. Now, the reason why the margin doesn't apply here is because we've added a gap of two. So if we remove that, then the margin applies but we don't have a gap. So let me go inside this first text component, give it a margin on the right of two, which is going to push this away. So now let's go ahead and render the ingredients as well as the, what else, let's see. So we have, we have the thumbnail here, which we're using the tags. We can, oh, you know what? We can render the tags as well. We can render this YouTube, but we need an extra package. And now we need the ingredients as well as the, the measures. So let's go ahead and render out the ingredients. And you can see that each ingredient is a string. And <laughs> when you get here, you can see that like there are some that just don't have ingredients. So we're going to need to check for every single ingredient here. And then check for every single measure, whether it exists or not, and then render it on the screen. So what we're going to do is this. We are going to go ahead and render out. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I don't know whether you can use a flat list for this, but if you can, then you can correct me in the comments. It is going to be helpful if I can use a flat list or not. Now, we're going to go right above. We're going to go above the instructions. And above the instructions, we're going to render out a view and close it out. And then inside this view, we're going to render out some text that says ingredients. And then this text is going to be styled as follows. Give it a class name of font bold, text, slate, 800. 
margin bottom of two and we're going to have that let's make it bigger let's say text dash large so ingredients there we go and then we're going to begin to make our checks so we're going to pass in our curly brackets and we're going to say m dot str ingredient one that is its name str ingredient one and we're going to say that when this is true then we want to enter out some text and this text is going to say m dot str ingredient one and then save it and we should see chicken now the measure should come before the measure should come before so we need to say uh let's see the measure is here one pound chickens yeah so the measure and then the ingredient so we're going to say when m dot str ingredient one is true and m dot str measure one is also true then we want to render out this that says uh let's say let's modify this text a bit we're going to render out m dot str measure one and then add a space then then say m dot str ingredient one save it and this is how it looks like so we're going to say one whole chicken and yeah that's what we're going to do and then give this some class name and then let's say text slate dash 600 text small and then leading six to increase the line height there we go and then we're going to do this we're going to copy this copy and paste it one two three and then for each of this one 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 we're going to change it to two and what i'm doing there is selecting or rather highlighting the one and then pressing ctrl d to select the other the other ones <laughs> aye, aye. so let's change this to three and then select this one say select the other ones change it to four and if i save that what you notice is this now we're getting the ingredients as well as the measures now we need to do that for each of the 20 items because we need to check whether all of them exist and then render on the screen so this is number four so let's say five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty and then let's go back to number four right here and then we can go to number five so select this one control d changes to five and then one uh, let's see down 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 and again okay that doesn't work so once again here changes to six once again here change this to seven once again change this to eight and really nine and then eleven and then twelve and then thirteen and then fourteen and then 15 and then 16 and then 17 and then 18 and then 19 and finally 20 oops 20 there you go so save it and now we should have all our ingredients would you look at that and you can see that this one doesn't have all 20 ingredients but it's only showing the ones that it has so that's why it's important to check for every single one of them so that you don't happen to miss an ingredient uh, showing on the screen now for the instructions here i want to change it up a bit so i want to cut this out and place it inside a view of its own why isn't this auto closing so place it inside the view and then save it and then pass in some text inside here that says how to make let's just have it as how to make and then give this a class name text large text dash slate dash 800 and then what margin bottom of two save it and we should have how to make and this needs to be margin y and then this needs to be font bold as well so font bold and save it and there we go so how to make and ingredients you know what let's make this margin top of four margin bottom of two i think that would be much better 
So save it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now we can go ahead and go back. Let's go to another food and you can see that it's going to load in sometime today. There we go. And you can see that it gets the ingredients. So all the ingredients and then how to make as well on the bottom. And like I said, this one has multiple foods. I mean, not really multiple foods, but like it has multiple methods that you can use to prepare the same food. So that's why we're getting all of these showing up here. Now, I just noticed something that we need to go ahead and add some space between each of the separate ones for this one that has like multiple methods of, on how to cook it. So what you can do is if you go back to the meal here, to the view, sorry, the, the main view, right when we are mapping over our our meals, we can go ahead and give this a class name. And you can see like margin bottom, you can say something like 12, just to get some really large space so that we know that that is a previous meal and then this is another one showing up. So once again, loading. And then once it loads, you can see that right here, we're going to have a margin bottom of 12. So yeah, that's looking fantastic. Now, something else that you can try to implement is this. You can go ahead and say that when you click on this, when a user clicks on the category here, then it's going to go ahead and trigger the, the very first get request. Remember this one? So it triggers the, the, the get request to this endpoint and then shows your categories again for that particular food. That is something that you can try to do on your own. It is just simply as simple as going and saying, I think it, it should be this one, the category. So this one, so it wasn't, it wasn't the first one. It was this one that we were fetching the foods. So you can go ahead and pass in this category in your, in this get request and then just like re-rendering what is happening on the screen. So you can try to implement that. And if you're successful, then big ups for you. <laughs> now, the final thing that I want to do is on the homepage, I want to add the ability to search for a food by its category. So if I go inside the homepage, and I think I have to create a new component for this one. So below the header, I'm going to create a new component and I'm going to call this one search. So when you close it out and you save it, then your application is going to break because we don't have that component. So inside my components, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it search.js and then say rnf inside here and then save it. And then when you try to import it once again, now we should see our search component right here. But of course, it's not going to be rendering the, the words search. Instead, inside this component, I'm going to be rendering a text input. So let me cut this out. And then let's render text input. And this is coming from React Native. Now the text input, we can give it a placeholder and you can search for something like eg, let's say eg chicken and then save it, that should be fine. EG chicken, and then let's style it out. So give this a class name, and you can say padding or round of four, rounded dash large, and then border and border dash slate dash 400, and then save it. And then let's go ahead, let's wrap this text input inside the view, so that inside this view, we can go ahead and give this view a class name, class name of padding all round of four, which is going to push it inwards just a bit. And you know what? I don't want the padding on the bottom, so I can say padding bottom zero, so that this is just like equal to this piece. So when you click on this, then it's going to open up your keyboard, as you can see. And we can increase the font size for this. So we can increase, let's say, text dash large. Okay, yeah, that should be okay. And then you can type in, of course, and you can type in using your keyboard as well. So let's go ahead and implement the functionality for the text input. And for this, we need to go ahead and use the use state hook. So const, let us let me call this what? Search text, search text and set search text. This is going to be called to use state and by default, it's just going to be an empty string because we're not searching for anything by default. And then once we have this, then we can go ahead and pass in a value here and the value is going to be equal to text, which is a new variable that we're creating. And then we can say set text or rather set such text into text, meaning the text that you type in. And then I want it to be rendered in lowercase. So I can say dot to lowercase. 
case and you know what this is not this is not value this is uh, this is on change text that's what it's called in react native and then we can pass in another one that is called on submit editing so on submit editing we're going to go ahead and pass in a function that is called handle search okay now handle search is going to be coming from the props so or handle search so we're going to create this function in our home page so let's see this should be fine i hope so so now this should be fine oh you know what i just realized something we need we need access to this search text in our home page because we're going to be calling a we're going to be making a get request to the api again so what we need to do is we need to refactor this a bit so we need to grab this from here but then we also need to destructure we also need to destructure this because we're using this inside this component so set search text destructure it as well as handle search i think that is all for this one so you can save this but then inside our home page we need to go ahead and pass in the text here so now that we have our search text here we need to go ahead and create another function so i'm going to go below this and let me copy let me copy this function because it's going to be similar to this so copy and then let me just go ahead and say paste it here but we're going to change the name obviously so i'm going to say let's say search food for the name of this function and then we're going to place it inside a use effect wait a minute it's not even search food it's handle search i mean that's what i called it right handle search that's what i called it inside here so handle search and then let's pass it in as a prop so handle search prop is equal to the handle search state value now what we need to do is this we need to change the link the link the endpoint that we're going to be hitting is similar to the single foot page so it's basically this one except that now we're going to be passing in change this to backticks change this to backticks so instead of passing in route.params we're going to be passing in the search text so basically we're going to be searching for whatever text that we type in now once we do that we need another state value and this one we're going to call this results so const results and set results meaning the results that we get back when we finish when we press the submit button so this is going to be equal to use state and by default it's going to be an empty array as well now what we're going to do therefore is this we're going to go ahead and cut this entire view out so cut it out and then we're going to go ahead and check for if results is true so if there are any results meaning if our array of results is not empty then we want to go ahead and render out some kind of data so i'm just going to paste this in and let's see what we need to change here is what this is no longer going to go into foods instead it's going to go into food so singular food meaning this page that shows more details about that particular food and then we need what is loading i mean we can we can have what this is now saying categories.map and so now it shouldn't say categories.map it should say results.map and then every single category here should now say result so the result that we're getting back so result and then this one result and then this one as well result and then this one result and then this one result and i don't think we're going to be getting the the description here might we no we're not going to be getting the description because for the single page for the single food page we are getting the instructions so we don't want to get that i mean we can also not show the category here we don't need it so basically we only need the image and the name we need the name so text and then we need to say result result dot str mil oh str mil that's its name and then give this a class name and we're going to say text slate 800 font bold and text dash xl i think i used xl i can't remember 
but I hope that this is going to work. Now, for our else statement, so when results is not true, then we want to render our original thing, which I pasted, or rather, which I copied. So now let's save this, and let's hope that nothing breaks. Okay, so something does break. So something breaks. Why is this supposed to be negated? Let's try it. Let's try it. Okay, so when there are no results, wait, what? When there are no results, and then this shows. Um, I'm confusing myself. Let's let's try. Let's say B. Let's search. Okay, an error. So set such text is not a function. Set such text. Set such text. Oh, we haven't passed it passed it in as a prop. So here, so set such text is equal to the set such text function. Save it. And then let's try it again. So let's say if, and we should get, okay, another error, map of undefined. So categories, so categories, hmm. something is wrong here. Categories dot map, something is wrong. What is my state value here? Categories, I think this should be an array. I think that should be an array. Let's try it again, beef. So we'll get another error. So it's still saying categories.map is not a function. Oh, I know, I know, I know what I've done. I, I just noticed that this is inactive. So what, what we need to do is here, we need to say set results and then set results into data.mills because that will, that's what we should be getting back. So save it. And then now let's see, let's search for beef. And there we go. So, okay. Nope, that is not where we go. Something is still wrong. Something is still wrong. Let's search for bacon. And yes, 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 yes. Something is still wrong. Something is still wrong. And I, I still think this should, should not be negated. Because we want, when results is true, we want this view to load in. Right? I mean, uh, let's see. Let me disable this. Let me disable that. So, oh, wait a minute. This is, should even say result, not results. So save it. Let's see. Hmm. And then if I search for beef, what happens? So it searches. And then we need the key here. What is the key for the single food? Is it ID meal? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? ID mill. So that is the key here. The key here. ID mill. So that we get rid of this error. But now we should get OK. So is result dot str category. Once again, we should be showing what? The image str mill thumb. So str str mill thumb. And we should see it now the food. Okay, so the results are working. So when I click on this, it should give me more information. Okay, look at that. Look at that. Now let's go back to the home page. Let's remove this. And when I press enter, then we get we get some like random meals, right? We get some random meals. So why isn't why does this want to be negated because when i negate it then we get our categories there's something i'm doing wrong and i can't seem to figure out what it is let's search for something here beef see that so when it is negated and i search for something it doesn't search so there's there's something missing and um, i can't seem to figure out what it is there is something missing somewhere something missing and now that we're here let me do this let me say that when we get the results and we set is loading to false let me also say set such text set such text back to an empty string so that it clears the input let's try it so chicken chicken and okay it still doesn't clear it for some reason hmm 
okay do you know what do you know what i just figured out is that if we place this to be an empty array then our application breaks the functionality breaks see that but if it is not an empty array if it is just an empty use state then it works i mean what <laughs> this is the second time where having an an empty array inside here has really messed up with me the first one was in the github users video which you should also watch because it's in, it's very nice and this is the second time and it's quite annoying it is quite annoying now something that i want to do is i want to do a bit of refactoring so what what is this what is this uh in the food page so i want to do a bit of refactoring where i don't want my input to be visible like like the header so we are going to need to move it downwards and we're going to need to move it inside the scroll view so if i place it there and save it then it should be okay yes but then now we need to go inside our search component and we need to remove the padding on the x so this should be padding on the y then let's remove this there we go there we go that is much much better okay now something else that i've just realized when we're on the home page we don't want this back arrow to be showing so that means that i have to do a bit of refactoring for the home page so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this entire view for my header copy it and then only on the home page i'm going to change this up i don't want this icon to show up but i want the text to say welcome welcome so if i save that then it should be fine yes that should be fine and then we can center it why is it not being centered it's because of this flex so we need to remove it save it and now it should be centered there we go there we go and of course we can now add in our the name of our application called food palace and fantastic looking nice 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 and so once we have that then we should be finished with the application i don't think there's any functionality that i have not yet added in but in case there is then you can just research how you can do that uh, such as for example if you wanted to add like a favorites list so you can go ahead and like on the on the foods page you can go ahead and add like add to favorites or something or like a heart icon here which which then adds it to another favorites page that someone can view but yeah i think that is going to be it so what i want to do is i want to commit this to github so that you're going to have access to it so let me go ahead and open up my github okay github if you can spell it and i think now it's safe to remove this i think we are officially done so let me create a new repository and i'm going to call this food uh, let me uh what should i call it let me just call it food palace but i'm going to probably think of another title for the video so food palace yt and then create repository and then make this full screen and then open this up and then copy this link and then Control j to open up our terminal and then we can officially shut this down we can just delete it so really open up okay and so i'm going to say git add components and git commit dash m and i'm going to call this components and then git add screens and git commit dash m screens and then git add upper chairs and git commit dash m and i'm going to say set up uh, react navigation and then git add bubble dot config dot js dot js and then git commit i'm going to say add tailwind css plugin and then git add tailwind dot config dot js and git commit dash m tailwind tailwind config file and then git add git add package star to add both of them and git commit and i'm going to say install 
React Navigation and Tailwind CSS. And then Git Remote and Origin, paste in our link. And then Git Branch dash M main to change it to the main branch. Then Git Push dash U Origin main, which is now going to push it to GitHub. Now, I do want to mention that if you want to build out your application so that you can share it out with your like your friends or, or what, there is a command from Expo CLI. And if I remember it correctly, the command is this. It is EA, EAS build. And this EAS is the Expo CLI. So you also need to install the Expo CLI dash P Android dash P not M Android and then we need to say dash dash profile preview now this is only going to build the Android uh, the Android build of the application It's not going to build the iOS build but like I said at the beginning of this video we were building for Android but you can still use the very same methods to build for iOS you just need to get the correct command when you're building out your application so when you run this command, it's also going to create an eas.json file for you where you can configure parts of your application, such as like the name. And yeah, so I'm not going to run this because I don't want this application on my mobile. And so yeah, that is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you liked it. And if you did, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not ready. It helps out greatly because I'm trying to get to 6,000 subscribers this year. So any help is going to be highly appreciated. So thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.